hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to So I just invite all of us now to be seated for a moment as we invite Dick's brother Dave to come forward and to share with us his thoughts. People of God, I'm Dave Schultz, little brother of Jerry Schultz, who's watching from Hawaii, and Richard Paul Schultz, whose eternal life we celebrate today. What I know from the early family stories was that Richard Paul was born on September 25th, 1938. Our parents were devout Catholics who sought eternal life for each of us in baptism the first Sunday after each of our births. Richard Paul was born on a Sunday, the following Sunday, October 2nd, 1938. He was baptized. I'm not sure why they chose his baptismal first name of Richard, but I do know that his middle name was chosen, acknowledging St. Paul. The second reading Dick chose for his funeral is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans and starts, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism unto death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so we too might walk in newness of life. Dick's walk on earth gained grace and strength through five more sacraments, reconciliation and Eucharist at the age of six, confirmation, age of 11, matrimony with Patricia Ann Turney, age 20, anointing of the sick and the dying, 
age 83. A sacrament is an outward sign of an inward action. There was only one sacrament that Dick did not receive. He did study for three years to receive holy orders. And that is the story I want to share with you today in celebrating my brother Dick's eternal life. It is not surprising that Dick chose the first reading today from the Book of Wisdom. Dick had great wisdom. He was a well-educated person. He was actually the first person on all sides of our family to ever receive a college degree. On September 9th, 1952, at the age of 13, Dick entered high school at Nazareth Hall Preparatory Seminary. Nazareth Hall was a six-year boarding school, four years of high school and two years of college by today's standards. Our mother wrote in a diary on that day, a day I'll never forget. Took Dick out to Nazareth Hall and David entered kindergarten. On April 14th, 1955, after two years and seven months of study, her diary entry stated, Dick told me of his intentions. I shall never forget this day again. Dick's intention at age 16 was to leave the seminary after one-fourth of the way to holy orders. Why did Dick choose to study for the priesthood at such an early age? What was he thinking? We will never know, and I never exactly asked him. We both knew that it made our mother very happy. But did he only go to please mom? He certainly had to, be, had to have dreaded telling her that he was leaving the seminary. I can attest to that ordeal as I followed Dick's footsteps in and out of the seminary after eight years. I believe Dick clearly used the gifts of the Holy Spirit to hear Christ's message in today's gospel Chapter 13, this is not today's uh, gospel, this is right before today's gospel in chapter 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you as an example that you should do as I have done to you. Dick entered the seminary seeking to love and serve God and all God's people. Dick left the seminary, I believe, knowing that holy orders is a sacrament for a few men who could not be married and then thus, and thus not be inwardly involved in the creation of more of God's people. Dick chose to embrace today's gospel from John chapter 14. He believed in God and in God's house. There is a place for him and for all of his family and friends Dick knew that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Dick spoke to me of the place prepared for him and the coming of the Lord. He was so ready and eager to go to his place. 
He was afraid that there would be pain involved. But he was more afraid of all the sorrow he would leave all of us in. Dick prayed that we would grieve, but through our pain, move on to knowing the way, the truth, and the life. Let us go rejoicing, as David sang in today's Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Celebrate Dick's life. Do not be afraid to grieve his loss in our worldly life. We are in the world of his love. Keep the faith, sisters and brothers. Rejoice in Dick's glory. Rejoice that we too shall follow him into God's eternal glory. Amen. All right, very good. Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Dick died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, Dick, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us now be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and an unsullied life, the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind, or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the when I heard them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the For the peace of Jerusalem, may those who love you prosper. May peace ever reign within your walls and wealth within your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. And love of my friends, I pray that peace be yours. For love of the house of the Lord our God, I pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. 
have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. So please be seated just for a moment. What beautiful flowers, my goodness sakes. And of course, we all know that there's something special about a rose. Uh, rose is the flower that best represents love. If we want to say, I love you to someone, the flower that we often give is we give a rose, especially the red ones. <laughs> I'm not going to say too much. Um, we just heard a very inspiring reflection by Dick's brother, Dave. But just a, just a little bit on this gospel for us to take with us today when we leave here. I go to prepare a place. I go to prepare a place. This is what we all find most beautiful about love. Whenever you and I love someone, we make a place. Somewhere in our heart, there is a place that that, that, that person takes in our heart. What I love watching before a funeral is the visiting that happens and just to see you all visiting with each other and just loving each other and encouraging one another and supporting one another. And it's very clear that each of you has a special place in the heart of this family. Each of you is dearly loved. Each of you knows that you are special. Each of you knows today that your presence here is an absolute gift, just a blessing. And again, because of the ways that we can support each other and love one another and encourage each other, what we celebrate by our faith is God has made a space. God made a space in the life of our dear brother Dick as he has made a special place within you, within me. And the good news is that that opens up to the full realization of Jesus bringing us home to the Father's house, to that place that has been prepared for us from all eternity because of what Jesus did on the cross and by his resurrection. What I love about this is that even though we will have to bear this sadness of this momentary absence with our dear brother, our dear brother Dick, it's only momentary. That there's a moment where we're all gonna be brought together again. I'm looking forward to that. One day we will see Dick again. You will see him, I will see him, he will see us. And the love that was shared in this life, that has not died. That has not died, thanks to Jesus. Dick still loves you dearly. The love that you have for him can still be received by him, which is beautiful. But his love for us is, is still flowing. That has not stopped. And one day, 
all of that will be fully realized in the holy communion of heaven. No more tears, no more suffering, no more death, no more sorrow, just the joy of being united in God's love for all eternity. So let's ask the Lord to help us bear this absence. It's very temporary and very short. Let's thank God for the gifts of God's grace um, that he lavishly bestowed on Dick and, and upon Pat and the kids and the, the grandkids and the great-grandkids. Is there f is it five great-grandkids? Five, yeah. 17 grandkids, five great-grandkids. My gosh. When God said, be fruitful and multiply, you guys took him serious. <laughs> anyway, what a gift to, to be together today to celebrate the gift of our faith. Uh, so let's commend the, our brother to the Lord now through this great ma uh, prayer of the Mass. And let's um, continue to be anchored in our hope in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise. And who, who's ever doing the intercessions can come forward at this time. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord, we now join our prayers to his. For Dick, who in Bath? You can take it, put it on, sorry, thank you. Um, for Dick, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord your Lord. prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that God would raise him up on the last day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they would have rewarded the reward of their goodness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the Lord would welcome Dick to happiness, peace, and eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we would be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, giver of peace and healer of all hearts, hear the prayers of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people gathered here today whose lives were purchased by the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Forgive all the sins of our dear brother Richard and all those who now sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please now be seated as we prepare the altar.
Please rise. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant, your servant Dick, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Jesus, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember your servant, Dick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that we, grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Peter and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. rise. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With faith and hope in Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand.
as the raging waters in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand
Please rise. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Dick may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So after this funeral mass, the burial will take place in our cemetery just up the hill. And then afterwards, uh, there'll be the, the luncheon, hoping everyone can return and enjoy a nice warm meal together on this cold day. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Dick. And now we come to this last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Dick again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ. And this incense that we use now that rises heavenward is symbolic of the prayers of the angels and the saints, and our prayers join with theirs for our dear brother. Saints of God, come to his aid. Please come and meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Give him Eternal rest, O oh Lord. May your light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. So we come to another beautiful moment in the funeral liturgy called the prayer of commendation. And commending someone to the Lord is a beautiful act of love. And so the love that we have for our dear brother today, we are now going to express this together in this prayer of commendation. So please feel free to join me. We can express that with our bodies in extending our hands out in this way, in this gesture of commending. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Dick in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings you bestowed upon Dick in this life. They are all signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Dick forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now go forth. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Thank you. 
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace Oh